Hello, and welcome to our webinar, Branded Entertainment, Is Your Brand a Celebrity? My name is Christian Bright, and I'm the Account Management Coordinator here at EMG. I wanted to take a quick minute before we get started to address a few frequently asked questions, uh, give a quick introduction of our company, and introduce today's speaker. A few facts about our webinars. There will be a short Q&A at the end, so feel free to ask questions throughout via the comments feature on your panel. We will be recording the webinar, and we'll send it out to you typically within two to three days via a link in an email, which will direct you to our Knowledge Center located on our website, where you can also view past webinars as well as white papers. You can also view past webinars on our Vimeo page at www.vimeo.com slash emgtheagency. Additionally, we'll have a PDF of the slides available upon your request, so feel free to send me an email after the presentation if you're interested in uh, receiving those, or you can just view the presentation on our SlideShare page at www.slideshare.net slash Earthbound Media Group. To give you a quick overview of EMG for those of you who may not be familiar with us, we're a full-service interactive marketing agency specializing in marketing and promotions as well as web and technology. We are headquartered in Orange County, California, and we've been around just over 10 years. Some of our clients include the University of Southern California, City College of San Francisco, 20th Century Fox, State Farm, Loma Linda University Medical Center, and Harris Entertainment, to name a few working on a variety of projects that fall under marketing and promotions, such as search engine marketing, social media marketing, and video and interactive experiences, and also projects that fall under web and technology, such as web redevelopment, custom widgets and applications, and CMS implementations. Your speaker today is EMG's own managing partner, Damien Navarro. Damien will provide you with the information you need to achieve success through branded entertainment by cutting through the clutter of small attention spans and budget-conscious perspectives to reach a dedicated audience, create an engaging experience, and develop an involved relationship. So without further ado, I'll hand things off to Damien and let him get started. Hello everyone, uh, this is Damien Navarro. Let's just go ahead and get started since I'm sure uh, many of you guys are waiting to kind of see what might be covered in this particular um, area. So branded entertainment, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of what marketing tactics I would consider a form of branded entertainment. There's been quite a bit of evolution over the years uh, in what this is considered. Also the power of using that fan base. So we'll touch a little bit more on social networking uh, as well as uh, some of the distribution channels that we've seen when developing different types of content. And um, we're going to span everything from a little bit of touching on cause campaigns, obviously viral videos, but also just the general content strategy itself. How and where is it being used? How organizations are achieving success with it? And of course, uh, the fun stuff, which is how it, do you determine your own celebrity status? And most of the area that we're gonna cover in that particular field is around social listening. So to begin with, I'd like to just discuss a little bit more, maybe taking stock of where you guys currently are when uh, you determine where your brand rating might be. Um, in these two particular cases, although supposed to be kind of humorous, uh, you can take a little bit closer look to show that, you know, Oprah in itself has really done a fantastic job of not only branding herself, creating, of course, uh, a series of entertainment, con entertainment content, but also has done an incredible job of controlling that content. So a lot of things we're going to talk about is not just the content itself, but how do you remain and retain control over how people look at it and how people perceive it, and ultimately how you respond to feedback. Ultimately, we show on the other example where brands sometimes get a little bit taken away with the type of activity that they're doing, uh, where they do give up a considerable amount of control. So we'll talk a little bit about what that overall perception is and ultimately how reputation plays such a critical part um, to developing this type of content. So some of the questions we sometimes ask ourselves or uh, that we, we have seen clients asking themselves is, is our brand providing itself, uh, pride itself in being in the know? Are you guys the first ones that people consider when looking for information that is relevant to your type of service offering? Do you have an active voice? Um, are you, do you have a consistent fan base? Do you have uh, followers that are coming to your aid if people are miscuing information or um, are combating information based upon negative publicity or negative content? So how do you use that? Um, how do you engage with potentially supporting a cause? How do you, relevant, how do you use relevant partners um, to create different types of campaigns that would be considered um, somewhat different than maybe some of the approaches that you've currently been taking. And then of course the flip side, so is your brand considered to be out of touch? 
old school, boring, uh, is it struggling with what's considered that silo effect? Is marketing and PR not working consistently with technology and developing out a consistent content strategy? Um, and ultimately, how are we increasing our digital footprint? How are we making sure that we are the top of mind when, when thing, we relate to things like organic search um, to make sure that people are finding us uh, upon um, first touch points versus farther on along the process? So just to consider, just a little bit of background before we dig into some of the more tactical examples, um, is just a little bit of an overview on what used to be considered branded entertainment. Overly, overly it's, it's continuing to evolve, but you can kind of get a strong basis on where it really began, and that was um, in things like branded content and advertainment content. There's also a couple theories that I'd like to bring up that um, really help to define the methodologies that we take when defining potential campaigns that include areas for branded entertainment. Uh, the first would, of course, be uh, some of the more traditional theories like persuasion theory with uh, Aristotle, uh, the theory of reasoned action, and finally, the diffusion theory. And if I start to skip through a couple of these slides pretty quickly, again, just remember that um, we'll have a full video uh, version of this available quickly after the presentation that you guys can take a look. Uh, diffusion theory really came around when television began to um, understand the huge opportunity that it had with implanting specific ideas. Uh, but then also, if you've watched Mad Men recently, um, having the social networks also be able to reinforce that and cause it to grow on itself. So this is, you'll start to understand that social networks and of course social marketing existed well beyond uh, and well before things like Facebook and MySpace. And then again, before we kind of jump too far deep, this is just some great feedback, uh, great intelligence and some great uh, information on the subject itself uh, as it relates to branded entertainment and using this type of content to drive potential customers' awareness and ultimately even publicity and PR. So again, if we just looked at a timeline, um, I do like to use the example that essentially the first branded entertainment, which would have been considered product placement, actually happened in uh, a small film put on by the Lumiere brothers. And the Lumiere brothers were uh, the two that really defined and, and created the first ever projector. Uh, back in 1896, they did a small film that featured uh, some of the more popular soap of the day um, that was carefully positioned in camera uh, to show off the soap. Uh, so obviously we've come quite a ways since product placement where, you know, if we fast forward to today, you see things like um, comic books being created and funded by Harley Davidson. You see the Red Campaign that, of course, has become um, almost uh, renowned for driving brands and uh, as well as awareness um, around a number of causes. Uh, and then, of course, as even we begin to think about our content portals and how our content strategy works within our social networks, this is considered to be a form of branded entertainment in that people are no longer just looking for simple updates, but are looking to actually ins be inspired and entertained and engaged um, actively. So relevant uses that we've seen for branded enter entertainment really cross the spectrum. Of course, um, the most uh, relevant and easy to recognize ones would be just general audience awareness. When we look at you know viral videos and some of the viral campaigns, even as early as the, the newest Old Spice commercials or the new Levi's commercial where we see uh, somebody crossing the country and um, really the, even the brand isn't necessarily top of mind but just this idea that people want to share this type of content has really become critical for certain brands that are looking to really penetrate various markets. Uh, staff recruitment, um, in the case of education or healthcare, even faculty or physician recruitment, has also been a huge opportunity for brand entertainment in uh, opening up uh, potential opportunity op audiences to your brand that they know that they typically wouldn't have probably found. Um, another big one that we see, especially with uh, the likes of their customer, uh, their social channels, is customer service. So using really fun and engaging content to answer questions and to overcome objections with the brand um, prior to them being becoming disgruntled, not finding information, and engaging with another potential product or customer. Uh, and then, of course, when it comes to the big the big three, I would say search engine optimization, putting out content that especially if you have done a recent search for your brand uh, over uh, things like YouTube or 
um, any of the social channels to see what type of user-generated content is being put out there. Many times we find working with different clients that uh, there's a considerable amount of negative press or negative content that is out there. So how do you battle that? Um, how do you slowly become the most prized uh, content is ranked? And sometimes just putting out uh, generic content or simple promotional content just isn't seeing the type of traffic that is needed to move yourself up organically or battle to publicity awareness and of course reputation management at the same time. So as we set the context obviously this is something that is pretty daunting to look at but it really just reiterates the fact that for when it comes to branded entertainment content if you looked at that timeline if we went back to that timeline of where it began we really have to understand that initially branded entertainment was very costly, not only to produce, but to distribute and actually get eyes on it. So it used to be very costly product placements, partnerships, sponsorships, advertising um, that was needed to get distribution. The big thing now is that distribution is free. So when thinking about different methods that you might use to consider uh, creating new forms of content for your audiences, you really can experiment with different types of channels to see what types of audiences might react to it, what they think of it, before you really go and spend a considerable amount of money putting media behind it or uh, a considerable amount of money creating extensional, um, exp exponentially more content behind it. And again, just some most recent updates, uh, and I want to thank our interactive marketing group for giving me some of the most recent research. They've really done a fantastic job of um, keeping us up to date. But uh, these are just some really strong uh, theorems that support why these distribution channels are so critical to experimenting with. Um, obviously, most of the data that we try to use is 2000 and 2000, 2009, 2010, but there's just a, a number of audiences that, of course, are starting to jump on to this particular uh, bandwagon and uh, is really becoming really critical when we determine what and how people are going to respond to a number of not only campaigns but also content uh, and brand strategies before we pour a considerable amount of resources into it. And the other flip side of the coin is, of course, that this type of content many times doesn't even necessarily be, need to be created by the brand. We know that more and more brands are struggling with, the, with creating a number of different content channels and supporting different content channels with up-to-date content. Um, and it's kind of that, you know, do you take that build it and they will come attitude or do you really sit back and say, look, there's a number of people that are already supplying and building content for us. How do we create maybe some sort of loyalty program around them doing that um, and task them with creating ever considerably more relevant content that you can in turn use in a number of ways? But this is just a good example to show that there is millions upon millions of people that are engaging and creating uh, relevant content that could be used for your brand constantly. And then again, before we just, uh, in the next slides, we'll jump a little bit more into case studies and, and kind of some of the observations that I've seen that have inspired this direction of using branded entertainment for not only ourselves but clients, um, is which direction are you going to start in? So what, what kind of builds on the last slide is whether or not we are going to create a platform that really makes our audience and those followers and fans of ours, um, customers of ours, the celebrity, or are we in we in turn going to be the celebrity ourselves. And this is important to kind of figure out before you get started because these both can lead very down very different pathways. Um, but if we in fact are going to be the entertainer versus really uh, creating a window or opportunity for our, our fans to be the entertainer um, is going to be critical in determining what channels we use, what assets and content we'll be leveraging, and how ultimately we'll be rewarding either the individuals within our teams, our agencies, or our customers themselves. So here we'll go and start to dive in. And what I really try to do is give some extreme examples. So taking two very different verticals in many cases that are using the same concepts um, in, in, in considerably different ways. And so for this particular case, uh, as we start to get a little bit more into um, not only styles and types of branded entertainment that we're seeing, but also making sure that we talk about a little bit over the demand for this type of content. Um, and of course, as we just touched on, the, the importance for making that institutional impact of your brand more accessible both in multiple channels from mobile to email to search um, to as well as global awareness in many cases.